Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be episode one in a new series on beginner projects with Python. And the first thing we're going to do is take a look at calculating compound interest in this episode. So uh, I have this image from the internet of the formula for compound interest. And if you're unfamiliar with compound interest, then you at least can just look at this formula. But essentially, it's money that you put into an account that accrues a certain amount of interest over time. And what we're going to do is calculate the final amount that you would have in the bank. So if you put $10,000 in the bank, leave it in there for a few years, depending on the interest rate you're getting and the number of times it compounds, you're actually going to end up with more money than you put in. And what we're going to do is create a Python tool for calculating that. So. I'm going to go ahead and start by defining a compound interest function. And as we just saw in our formula, I'm going to keep clicking back to this. To get an output, we're going to need four things. Principal, interest rate, number of times interest is applied per time period, and number of time periods elapsed. So let's just go ahead and call them by their variable names. It was P, R, N and T. And again, this is a useful tool even if you don't really care about compound interest. It's a valuable thing to kind of understand how to turn a formula into a function within Python. And if you're ever, you know, programming a financial tool for an app or any really any reason, um, it's a great it's a great skill to be able to have to take a formula and turn into a function. So let's go ahead and create a, a variable called amount for our final amount and we'll just uh, put the function in there. So it was p principal times and then we're going to use this python pow function so we can put everything inside these parentheses and then we can specify the power we want to raise it to. So it should be 1 plus R divided by N, close parentheses, close parentheses, and then leave. Oh, it still needs to be inside those. And then raised to the NT power. So this function, at N times T, this function is what we're saying is inside the power function 1 plus R over N, which is right here and then comma and this is the power we're raising it to and so that should do it for that and then we're going to uh, go ahead and just separate out the interest so we can make sure that our um, that our compounding interest formula is actually working and that'll be amount minus p so this is going to be final minus initial and that's so now we've gotten we have the initial amount we have the amount of interest and then we have the total so really what's left is to display these on screen so we'll go ahead and print compound interest is and we will report interest here and then we will print initial investment was and print P here and then we will print total will be and let's print amount and so this is pretty cool on its own you can pass in a principal amount of money we'll actually do one of these here um, we'll do compounding interest if we passed in ten thousand dollars and we had a rate of five percent although th so this formula needs to have it as a decimal so rate of five percent we'll say it's compounded once per year and then we'll say we want to compound it for ten years and just running that compound interest oh well, I'm running main just running that, we can see with an initial investment of 10 grand, 
over 10 years, you're getting 6,200, uh, almost 6,300 of compound interest, and it tells you your total. And this is pretty cool on its own right here, but we actually can take this a bit farther and make it a little more user friendly because this is not necessarily how you would want to enter this data. So let's go ahead and create basically a function to handle the prompts. So we'll say compound interest prompts. And this function is not actually going to need any inputs. It's going to handle all of it in turn. And we'll just start creating variables for the different um, we'll start creating variables inside this function for the different uh, for the different variables we need in our compound interest function and so the principal amount we'll say we want that to be an integer and then we'll input and say enter initial amount and that'll do it and then let's make another one and say rate and let's say that's going to be a float so it could be decimal and input enter anticipated interest rate and we'll we'll ask for that as a percentage and then we can actually handle the math here on our own if we just divide by 100 right in here. So now w once we get the actual rate variable, it's already coming through as a decimal. And then we'll say n input is going to be, now this one's a little different and a little more specific to compounding interest, but um, you want a compounding period. So um, something could compound daily, monthly, or annually depending on the fund and that's going to affect what n ends up being which we'll calculate that part next but we need we need them to specify we need the user to specify how frequently it's going to be getting compounded so let's just ask for single letters back m for monthly a for annually and then you'll see we'll actually handle what to do with n input right now so if n input is a then the actual n variable which I'm gonna call frequency just because there's a lot of n's in this program frequency is actually gonna be one that's gonna be how many times per uh, year because we're gonna say t is in years technically this formula works with any time frame but it's actually just going to be easier if we do it in years. That's the most standard way people calculate interest. So then if it's M, it goes up to 12 because we're saying how many times it compounds per year. And then if it's daily, we'll say 365 just because um, 364 doesn't catch leap years. And so now what we're doing is we're telling we're having the user tell us how frequently it compounds but then they don't have to punch anything in for n. We do that math with the frequency variable. And then the last input we're going to want is let's make it another float and say input enter the number of years to grow and that should do that and then the last thing we have to do with this formula is we're actually going to call inside our compound interest prompts formula we're gonna call compound interest but we're gonna pass in the variables that we created in this function so frequency and time so j just to explain what we did here we have this function that actually handles getting prompts from the users and um, putting it in kind of conditions that the the compound interest calculator can use but this function is not doing any math so then once we get all of our inputs we can nest this other function inside of it and pass these through and you may be saying to yourself well we already created this function why not just build this out inside the same function totally valid you can do that 
This is to show if you already have useful calculation tools, but you don't have a useful way of gathering that info from a user, this is a way you could build an interface that gets user input and then passes it through your calculation tool. So then all we need to do outside of that is just call our function compound int prompts. And when we run this, hopefully, we'll see if I did anything goofy. But here we go. Let's see, 10,000. Uh, let's do a rate of 5, and we can enter it as a percent this time. Let's say it compounds annually, and we're going to grow for 10 years. So this should be pretty close to what we saw before. Yeah, we get the exact same 6288.946. Um, and then the total together, but this is pretty cool. I mean, we can run it again, and let's do something. Initial amount, 10,000. But let's say our interest rate is up to 7% and we're going to compound daily and we'll still grow for 10 years so you should see with more frequent compounding and a higher interest rate we should be a fair bit higher yeah there you go so we went from 6200 to ten thousand dollars and right away you see kind of the um, cool thing about compound interest so let's say you're like a 30 year old um, with a decent 401k savings and you have 50 grand in retirement and you have another um, you're expecting to average seven years, uh, seven percent in the market. Fund compounds daily, and you've got another 35 years before you retire. Without putting any more money in, you're gonna accrue more than 500 grand just on 50 grand with just sticking in a fund that gets seven percent per year. So, this is a pretty cool calculator. Again, if you're more into programming than you are into finance, just understanding how to take a function and turn it into useful Python code. This should be valuable for you. But there's a lot of scenarios where you might be writing code for a financial institution or you just need to have a little bit of worldly knowledge outside of the world of code. So that's how you build a compound interest calculator in Python. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did it another way or have any questions about what you saw in here, uh, feel free to drop me a comment. And if you found this or any of the content on the channel, useful go ahead and uh, I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe and uh, thanks for watching as always and good luck with your code thanks bye